Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and I'm kind of excited to do this one because keeping in line with a lot of the other videos that I've been doing today we are going to bash on cartel packs and on Bioware's marketing strategy especially when it comes to the cartel market and the items that they choose to put in cartel packs and as you guys can probably tell from the title of this video we're going to be talking about some of the most shameless reskins that Bioware has ever done on the cartel market. Now, in light of recent cartel packs, basically what's been going on is Bioware's been reskinning a lot of items more so than they actually did. And I often find myself kind of thinking back to the old, good old olden days and I go, I wish Hypercrates were, were like they were, you know, back in the day when we didn't have so many reskinned items. So that got me thinking, how good were they back in the day? And so I kind of went on the collections tab, searching for some armor sets, and boy did Bioware reskin some stuff. And I thought it would be cool for a video to look back on, you know, all the items that Bioware has released and go through some of the most shameless reskins they've ever done. And what I mean by that is just blatant reskins that, um, that just kind of will make you facepalm. I mean, fair warning right now, some of these will make you facepalm and just really wonder what Bioware is doing or what they're thinking. Uh, reskins in general are kind of an issue, aren't they? Because on one hand, Bioware markets these cartel packs as having brand new items never seen before in the game, and that's the kind of like the description that actually is used to describe them. And on the other hand, we know as players that they kind of just reskin the same stuff over and over again and give it to us. And that in itself is a problem, right? I mean, we, we don't really pay for reskinning, so when was reskinning considered an acceptable practice? And then there's also just reskinning taking to another level. And so these are the first ones that I kind of want to talk about. Uh, I call them the hero to zero. Basically, when Byro releases a gold item and then reskins it and releases it as a silver or a bronze item. And on one hand, it's a good thing because I guess people can have these items that are like gold items but are cheaper because they're bronze and silver rarity. And on the other hand, it's really bad because if someone, because the gold items are why people buy cartel packs, right? Like they're shown on the covers, buy where you know, markets them via their Facebook and Twitter saying, oh, get your, you know, here's your chance of getting one of these really rare armor sets or mounts, I'd buy this pack. And then buy where just releases a gold or silver, a uh, silver or bronze version that looks exactly the same, just slightly recolored or maybe a slightly changed here or there, but not really. And so let's go through some Hero to Zeros to give you guys some examples. Very recently, we had the Zakul Deus. Now, this one is a gold mount, uh, really popular from the Battler pack, sold for a ton. Uh, probably a lot of people bought the Battler pack in order to try to get this mount, and then it was reskinned to the Alliance console Deus as a silver rarity. Uh, all that was really changed, nothing to do with the design. The color was changed a little bit, which is like, okay, I guess they changed the color, but now this Alliance console Deus sells for like 500k. And this is a pure example of Hero to Zero, you know? Marketed as a gold item, rare, super exclusive, reskinned then to a a lesser rarity version and widely available to everyone. Uh, we see them with uh, armor sets all the time. One of the most primary examples here we have the Mandalorian Hunter. Um, so for some reason this was gold and then they reskinned it. Identical armor set with just a slightly uh, recolored thing. So now instead of being blue it's going to be bronze. I mean it's blue, it's going to be brown and it's a bronze rarity item. So you could tell that that's just kind of blatant reskinning. Um, and then even what's more interesting is they even release it as a PvE armor available from a vendor. You can buy the basically Mandalorian Hunter armor set looks almost identical, the helmet looks identical. And you can buy it for like 3,000 cartel coins from a vendor, which is just insane. So there's absolutely no point in like trying to get that gold armor set, you can just get reskin versions that look identical for much, much cheaper. Uh, another thing Mandalorian armor set that was reskinned was the Mandalore the Preserver's armor set. Now the helmet and the other stuff wasn't really reskinned, but the upper body armor, if you look, it's actually completely identical to the Cole Explorer upper body armor, which is a bronze armor piece that sells for like five to 10,000 credits on the GTN. So if you did kind of want a knockoff version of Mandalore the Preserver's upper body armor, you can actually get one off the GTN for very cheap. I personally, I just am disgusted by this because I really love the Mandalore the Preserver's upper body armor, I think it looks so unique and then Bioware kind of tried to stealth reskin it I guess because not a lot of people really would notice that the upper body armor has been reskinned but they totally just took that model and you know took away the shoulder pads here or there and just yeah, gave it to us again. Here's one that just makes me facepalm. We have the Shrewd Rascal and the Outer Rim Gunslinger. Now can you spot, let's be a game, spot the difference between both of these? I mean, I have a hard time doing so. They are literally identical. Even the color is identical. There was like no effort on Bioware's part to recolor or even try to make them remotely different. They literally just gave us the exact same armor set again. And the Shrewd Rascal is surprisingly gold, which is not unsurprising actually. It's a pretty nice if you think about it. But then the Outer Rim Gunslinger is bronze. So I'm not really sure what the logic is there. It's just 
as exactly as the title of this video says, a shameless reskin. Here's another one, the Troublemaker up, uh, armor set. Not sure why this one is gold, but for some reason it was released as a gold armor set. It doesn't have a helmet, so really it's the upper body armor that's supposed to be the highlight of this armor set. And then if you look at the Badland Renegade, uh, this is the exact same model of a upper body armor. The Badland Renegade is indeed a bronze armor set. The only difference is the collars. Like the collar is a little bit higher on the Troublemaker than it is on the Badland Renegade. But for some reason, Bioware thinks that having a little bit of a higher collar means that that means that's gold and the other one is bronze. It really makes you question what Bioware's criteria is when they're choosing a gold armor set or a bronze armor set. For me personally, when I look at all these armor sets and stuff, it just seems random to me. So that's really interesting. So those are like the hero to zeros that I was talking about. That's to me another level of reskinning. On one hand, you just have reskinning, which in itself I think is a pretty bad practice that is somehow now considered acceptable by Bioware standards. But on the other hand, uh, there's these hero to zeros, right? Gold things being reskinned to bronze, and uh, that just pisses me off. Okay, now let's go and do something that we've seen with a lot of the older cartel packs. And thank God Bioware decided to abandon this because um, this was just blatant. Um, tomfoolery if uh, I'm gonna go into my old English here uh, we have like what Bioware did was when they released a cartel pack in the exact same cartel pack they would have two versions of identical armor sets just slightly recolored so it was a way by which Bioware I guess could give us more items but they were the exact same I'm not really sure what the logic was here look at this we have the voltaic vandal and the dynamic dynamic vandal the exact same armor set slightly recolored uh, charged Peacemaker, the overload, uh, overloaded Peacemaker, the Charged Interrogator, the Overloaded Interrogator, the exact same armor sets, uh, just slightly recolored. The Potent Champion, Energetic Champion, the Galvanized and Energized Infantry, the list goes on and on. So really this was interesting. It's something I never noticed back in the past, but this is hilarious. Like they literally just released two of the exact same armor sets, slightly recolored it and put them in, threw them all into one pack. So were there ever the good old days when Bioware didn't really reskin stuff and actually gave us really cool stuff? Not really. These cartel packs were kind of always filled with junk and for some reason I just don't think people made it big enough of a fuss and Bioware decided that, you know what, it's acceptable for us to reskin. Let me know what you guys think honestly because I might just be making a big fuss out of nothing, which is t entirely true. A lot of my videos are just me making a big fuss out of seemingly insignificant stuff and it really kind of is because at the end of the day, I've already suggested don't buy cartel packs and you know, no one's forcing you to buy them. You don't need to buy them to win the game or whatever. So in hindsight, it doesn't really matter. But then again, YouTube is always just a platform for making a big fuss out of this kind of stuff. So might as well take um, use of that. So, um, the last thing I kind of want to talk about is um, I think less is good, honestly. Like with cartel packs, I would much rather have three cartel packs, three to four cartel packs a year that are filled with quality content that is not reskinned rather than the one cartel pack every month. Um, but obviously that doesn't make Bioware as much money, but I personally think that would just be a much better practice. Actually, they might even make more money because... I have a hard time believing that the recent cartel packs have been selling very well. I think the Vigilant Defender cartel pack might actually sell pretty well because it's got some really nice mounts, but the ones before that, like these stalwart leader packs and stuff, you can tell that they're not selling too well by the fact that the GTN is not being flooded at all. Like some of these stuff are selling for very, very high prices. The reason being people have not bought these packs and opened them. Uh, maybe partly that's due to the fact that so many YouTubers such as myself and other people as well have been condemn condemning cartel packs, telling their subscribers not to buy them and stuff, which is a good thing in my opinion because hopefully that will incentivize Bioware to maybe put some more effort into their stuff. On the other hand, one person actually left a comment on one of my videos saying it's actually a good thing that cartel packs are bad because that means they're not putting so much effort into that and putting effort into other avenues of the game like, you know, PvP, uh, PvP maybe or uh, the new operations bosses and stuff. That is kind of an optimistic way of looking at it but I personally don't think it's too hard to make good uh, cartel market armor sets honestly there's so much fan fiction so many cool armor designs out there I just think it's pure laziness and incompetency on the part of whoever are designing these armor sets and stuff and just deciding that it's okay to reskin the same stuff over and over and over again and I'm telling you guys like there's reskinning is one thing but what I've shown in this video is just another thing like just blatant giving us the same armor set again and not just giving us that, but then reducing its rarity so that you make the uh, the gold stuff even less uh, worth it. It's just it's just really crazy.
all right guys this is like 10 minute video and i was planning for it to be like a five minute video so i'm going to end it here i do hope you guys enjoyed the video and please let me know in the comment section what you guys think is the most shameless reskin these are just a few that i was able to find and as i mentioned earlier they just made me facepalm and i thought it would be cool to make a video but i probably missed a few so let me know in the comment section i'd love to go check those out as well I do hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one